If you look at what actually takes place in the core of these near-death experiences, they are consistent with Christian theology. They're consistent with the teachings of the Bible. I believe what the Bible teaches about the afterlife, but when, you know, I've also got a skeptical gear. You know, my, my background's in journalism and law, and, and so when you're in that position, you begin to say, okay, uh, I, I believe what the Bible teaches, but what does science say about it? Does science corroborate that and support that? Or um, what about philosophy and so forth? I was a skeptic about near-death experiences until I found out we have 900 scholarly articles that have been written and published in um, scientific and medical journals over the last 40 years. This is a very well-researched area. In fact, The Lancet, which is the famous medical journal in the United Kingdom, um, um, concluded in an article that all of the alternative explanations, oh, this is oxygen deprivation, this is just hallucinations, none of those can account for the features of near-death experiences. They just don't account for it. I interviewed for my book, John Burke. He spent um, um, about 35 years studying a thousand near-death experiences. And his conclusion is, and this is powerful, his conclusion is if you look at what actually takes place in the core of these near-death experiences, he said they are consistent with Christian theology. They're consistent with the teachings of the Bible. These are not hallucinations. Hallucinations is, uh, tend to be scattered. They tend to be nonsensical. They tend to be shallow. These are deep and these change lives. None of these alternative explanations that critics raise can account for all the phenomenon of near-death experiences. My husband told me that I all of a sudden fell over in bed. My eyes were wide open. Uh, within a t short time frame, I come above my body and I looked down and I could see my husband, I could see the doctors, the nurses, I could see him doing chest compressions on me. And for 11 minutes, I didn't breathe. But in a blink of an eye, I smelt the flowers. I heard the singing. I opened my eyes. I knew that I was in heaven. So as I looked upon this infant at my mom and dad's feet, I couldn't understand who that was. I knew everybody else, because it says in the Bible, we will be known as we were known. Uh, but I couldn't realize who that was. And God just told me, he said, that's your child. After seeing the beauty, the love, the joy, the peace, the awesomeness, there is no comparison ever here on earth. I mean, they're home, they're at peace. There is nothing like that. I hope um, they're experiencing hope, encouragement, um, that this is not our uh, permanent home, that uh, there is a, uh, as Jesus uses a metaphor in John chapter 14, of a heaven's a home. You know, you think of the, what does home represent? Warmth, security, love, and so forth. And that is what uh, heaven is going to be.